The problem with St. Valentine is that there are actually two Valentines. Both of them died as martyrs, uh, late third century. Uh, one of them martyred during the reign of uh, Claudius II Gothicus, probably around 269, 270. Um, he was a, um, an elder and physician by occupation in Rome, uh, where he died as a martyr. The other Valentine, uh, around the same time, was the bishop of a small town named Terni, about 60 miles from Rome. And so both of them dying in the late 3rd century, uh, both of them being remembered uh, in the list of martyrs. The early church would remember those who died for the faith uh, on a regular basis. They would have a, a day in the year in which they would be remembered. And so uh, February the 14th became associated uh, with the, the two martyrs, Valentine. Well, that's really the, 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 the largest amount of material that we know about both of these men. Uh, the association with romantic love, obviously, at that point, is quite thin. So love uh, becomes connected to St. Valentine, not because of the martyrs themselves, but later. Um, February the 14th was uh, St. Valentine's Day, and uh, around the uh, 13th, 14th century, uh, particularly in the writings of Geoffrey Chaucer, um, St. Valentine's Day becomes associated with the idea that it's on that day that uh, birds choose their mates. Um, he actually has a reference to that in one of his poems. And uh, by the uh, early uh, Renaissance 1500s um, or middle Renaissance era, you start to find the association of St. Valentine's Day with love. Now obviously the whole uh, area of giving cards, etc., etc., is a more recent innovation and probably goes back to the 19th century when a lot of the uh, current festivals or holidays that we have, like uh, Christmas, etc., etc., became heavily commercialized. Uh, one is to actually recall uh, the fact that it, it is named after an early Christian martyr and uh, raise the question about the importance of martyrs in the history of the church, uh, that they do speak of, of a love that transcends all earthly loves and even transcends the love uh, for uh, your one's own life, which is the, probably the most important possession that we have. And here are men and women prepared to give that which is most important to them, their own very being and lives for, for the sake of Christ. The second way I think it can be redeemed is because of the association with uh, romantic love, I think it is important uh, for us as Christians to remember uh, that uh, one of the most vital aspects of the Christian life um, as it's lived out in the world is the marriage between a man and a woman and the, the love relationship, that it does lie at the heart of marriage. Um, if you look at the history of the development of romantic love in the last 500 years in Western culture, the Puritans play a very, very key role. Uh, in one of the Proverbs um, that deals with marriage, uh, there is a, a comment that says that a couple should not be forced to get married unless there is love between them. And that little comment indicates that the, the Puritans were committed to the idea that romantic love needs to be at the heart of marriage. There are two ways in which we can then help redeem uh, this particular festival, by remembering the martyrs, and then also by uh, emphasizing the importance of romantic love at the heart of any ongoing marriage.